Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about dividing decimals yet again because I realized it needs a part one and a half to dividing decimals. We've talked about in other videos regular division with decimals, but today it's what do we do when that nasty little decimal is stuck in the divisor. Okay, first off, we don't like it in the divisor. I wish that every time we did math, it was dealing with whole numbers. Whole numbers are friendly. Whole numbers are easy, but it's not always like that. Welcome to the world. Sadly, it just doesn't work out that way. So, sometimes, especially like in long division, we have decimals, and we don't know what to do with them. Okay, there's this algebraic principle right here, the, a principle of equivalence. Okay, so think about this equal sign, and both sides, for this to be true, have to be equal. A lot of times, it's pretty simple. 12 equals 12. Well, what about if I do 1 plus 12? Does 1 plus 12 equal 12? No. 1 plus 12 equals 1 plus 12, or 12 plus 1. So this principle, what I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to another. Same thing with, like, say, Tootsie Rolls. You know I love Tootsie Rolls if you've been watching the videos. And if I have three in one hand and three in the other, okay, then if I add one or two or three to one hand, in order to keep it balanced or equal, I need to get another one into the other hand so that they're both equal. Okay? That's what we're doing here. We need to keep both sides of this, the divisor and the dividend, equal. Okay, Equal ratios right here. And so what I do to one side, I'm going to multiply this by 10 and multiply it by 100. Okay? Moving the decimal over twice is actually timesing that number by 100. Remember, what I do to one side I need to do to the other side. So I move the decimal over twice or I'm timesing by 100. Okay. I'm doing the same thing to keep it on an equal ratio. Okay, They're still equivalent. 12 times 100 equals 12 times 100. Okay. That's 1,200 equals 1,200. This helps us with long division. So now that I've done that, hey, we have a whole number there, a little bit easier, a little bit more friendly to deal with. Going into 372.6 or n 6 tenths. So the basic rule is just bring that decimal straight up into the quotient, and then we go to town. 12 goes into 3 zero times. 12 goes into 37 three times. Multiply that, that's 36. Okay, subtract. And we get 12. 12 goes into 12 one time. Okay. Subtract and gets 0. Now we bring that down. And here's another thing I wanted to talk about. Always, 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 once you've brought it down, you have to repeat. So 12 goes into 6. How many times? 0 times. Okay. That's an actual step. Okay. And then you can multiply by 0, subtract the 0. Oh, and we have six. Okay. Then, because we're after the decimal, we can add that zero, bring it down, and then we repeat. Twelve goes into sixty five times, and that's an even finish right there. With decimals, we're going to keep going. Um, I recommend at least go out two decimal places, depending on what your teacher or instructor requires. Um, but it, as a general rule, go out about two decimal places and then round up or down as necessary. Anyway, so the biggest part to remembering dividing decimals is what to do with that decimal. If you move it from the divisor, if I move it over twice, I've got to do the same thing in the dividend. Move it over twice. Um, if, and then bring it straight up. And also, when you bring down repeat. 12 goes into 6 zero whole time. So make sure the zero comes up in that dividend. You might be asking, what if it's a whole number and we're moving that decimal? Every whole number has a decimal right after the whole number. This is 3,726. This is 3,726 and nothing. 
So it's just hiding right there. So it's hiding right there. I move it over twice because I multiply that side by 100. So I multiply this side by 100 and fill in those holes. And then the division process is just the exact same.